I am ready to leave. And you have coin to collect, I'm sure. Well, but I'm nice, I swear. Let's go, Seamus. Your father will be waiting in the keep. Then take me to him. Sir, yes, sir. My lord. Hey, this kid seems nice as well. He doesn't kill kids. Father. My son. I thought I'd lost you. Hmm. Enough, father. Allow me to present one Sarah Hawk, Excellency. He fulfilled the bounty. You have my gratitude. Thank you. I hope you encountered no great difficulties on my son's behalf. Um... Don't want to suck up to this guy. I do want to get in with a higher crowd. Hmm. Uh, am I tempted to joke? I, sh I sure am, because, uh... Just a few dozen deaths. No, I'm reading the tone here. It was my honour. There were complications, but I was privileged to keep your son from harm. I was told the Winters had involved themselves. Hmm. Was there no way to avoid an incident? They murdered my friend. Where is the concern for that? It was my understanding you were captured alone. Foolishly traipsing about the coast as you do. Hmm. I was not captured. I was with a shard. The Kunari. They are not monsters to be feared. If you would just try to understand, others would see as well. Better that you were thought abducted than to have their influence suspected in my own family. Benign or not, it's too much. Um. Oh, God. I think he's right to question. And I care. I do care. Well, that's just foolish. Listen to your boy. He's making sense. That is quite enough. All right. My apologies, Excellency, for this intrusion into personal matters. There is no... Just move. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see. This kind of... Uh, I wonder if that was the right decision, you know? Uh, I want to be heard. It's not a personal matter, though. It's a political one. The fact that it involves his son is irrelevant. I think, um... I don't know. I wonder if that's going to bite me later. Like, I could have had the, the chance to ingratiate myself there a little bit more, but honestly, seeing that simpering... I was honored to do it. That made me feel sort of dishonest. Um, I was trying out being uh, beholden to nobility in this way, and it, it doesn't sit well on my my shoulders. So, what happened to Viscount Perrin the Threshold? Threnhold was a travesty. I served in the keep, and my blood boils when I hear people call him a tyrant. He was a good man who tried his best to free Kirkwall from a the control of those who use power for their own purposes. It's always been that way here, hasn't it? Long ago it was the Imperium, then it was the Kunari, then the Orlesians, now the Templars. Why? When have we ever ruled ourselves? He tried to kick those Templar bastards out and give us real freedom, and what did it get him? Now the Chantry has chosen Lord Marlowe de Dumar as his replacement. After weeks and weeks of arguing, after telling the nobility that they would be choosing their Viscount, after, after everyone saying it was time to use a new title... Why not king? Uh, why keep using the name imposed by the Orlesians? And after all that, the Chantry chose him. I suppose I can see why. Everyone thinks he has the spine of a jellyfish, and it does seem that way. Truly, he has the Templars on one side and the nobility on the other, and everyone expects him to solve all their problems. Yet he has no power to actually accomplish it. He keeps the peace as best he can, and I think he does a good job even if no one else does, and he loves that sad little boy. I see the way young Se uh, Seamus, whatever, or Seamus maybe, uh, looks at, at his father, and I feel for him. Locked up in the keep with no other children, watching his father be put down by every self-important windbag that walks into the Great Hall. It makes me miss the days of Perrin and Threnhold, even if they were chaotic. We can only hope that one day, Seamus gives this city the legacy it deserves. Now that's an interesting point. By taking Seamus' sides there, I may well have invested in the future there, and maybe he will, he will know that he can come to me if there's something similar. Which is right, um, 
it is correct. Like, what he's thinking he should question. I'm impressed with your skill. Less so with your tact. But better you than the Winters, I suppose. <laughs> what, tact? Just not saying anything? Good day, Sarah. I'm not sure that's my style. Alright, what's this? Um, 50 years. That's how long it took the Imperium to drive out the Canary. Is this just history? I think it's just history, so... You can read that, like, look it up and read it yourself if you like. I, for one, I'm fine. Okay, so... We're home! We are him. Uh, whilst we're here, we might as well stop by Aveline and see if she has anything new to say. I doubt she will. Uh, but we do have our stuff to hand in. We have... Wait, hang on, is this new? No. Uh, nope. It's currently just a rumour and camp... Yeah, okay, so the rumours are nothing. The main plot, Wayward Sun, Ariana and Lowtown and, uh... Javaris at the Canari camp, so that's what we need to do next. What's this? Oh, nice crime you have around here. <laughs> is she in trouble? Um, secondary loose ends, red blossom special. Oh, particularly strong tincture of rose hip and goose shit, a full remedy for an embarrassing rash. The label says his intended recipient was Dallin Shaw, Dallian Shaw of Darktown. We'll get that to him as well. Let's see how Aveline is. Hello. Nothing going on, Hawk. You'd be the first to know if there was. Cool. I just like to drop by and say hi anyway. Kind of like this party though. In even in terms of like personality and stuff, it's it's got my sister who's great, Meryl who is uh fun and cute and stuff, and Varric who's just who's just very smooth talker who I do like. Aveline's great, but I I don't. F She's probably the one of the least interesting to me. Um, though I do respect her quite heavily, as I've said numerous times. Fenris is cool and all, uh, but... Like, he, he's just sort of losing out. L not like I'll never use either Aveline or Fenris ever again. I just, I kind of like the makeup of this party, and it, I think it made combat a bit more fun. And a bit more hectic down at normal difficulty, like I have to manage a little bit more, which might burn me out after a while. But it was still good. Alright, let's do the Dark Town thing first. All of their abilities, all the majorly abilities made combat a bit more uh, interesting today. Having to manage all those at once. Those facets of ability. So it's up here? Hello, do you have a rash? Check your purse. I think you lost something. This was free of its... This was free of its... <laughs> well... You're a lucky one. Thank you. You're welcome. I need your staff. Hope that's okay. Thought so. Thanks. <laughs> ah, so, that's that. And now we move on to, I guess, the docks uh, by day. So this should be interesting. Ah, whoa, whoa, wow. Well, that happened. What? That was weird. Let me pass. I have business with the Dwarf Javaris and your Arishok. The short mouth, yes. Hmm. Enter if you must, Basra. Thank you. So you're still grey-skinned, even though the Vashoth are the grey, or whatever. So this is intimidating. Um, nothing around here to interact with. Is there a shop to be known? I mean, can I just get in here now? Because if you were a merchant, then that'd be cool. I met a Kunari... Well, I didn't, but Nathan did. Nathan met a Kunari merchant before. He was fun. Sort of. He never sold me anything except that one time. Hey, Javaris. Ah, my right hand arrives. Summon your era, Shock. The bargain is done. About time you showed. I've been here for hours. Uh-huh. Well, I... I I'm scared. Tavares, hold my hand. <clears throat> Illustrious Aeroshock, I am here to report that your hated Talvashoth were felled, one and all. Right? Uh, yes, yes, yes they were. <laughs> so, I'm ready to open negotiations for the explosive powder, as we agreed. No. Okay. He's not getting it. Say something. S 
question their honor here? Do they not honor our deal? I just want my payment. Speak for yourself. Pay us, yo. The Talvashoth camped at the wounded coast are dead. You won't honor your bargain. There is no bargain to honor. His offer for the Gatlock was refused, so he invented a task to prove his worth when he has none. Oh. I broke my beard getting your outcasts killed. But he still has his beard. <laughs> Do you think it hurts? Meryl, stay at this. You hired someone more competent and now stand in their shadow pretending it is yours. Ah. Uh. You demean his accomplishment. Get out of my sight before I bother lifting my sword. So what will you do with me? They are gone though. Nevertheless, you have benefited from his action. Do you think we are unable to hunt our own outcasts? This was interference, nothing more. So I get nothing for all this work? If anything, we have been denied the righteous application of the wisdom of the Kuhn. What payment should I exact for that? Go, Dwarf, before I begin my tally. Um... <sighs> hmm. I have no idea how to act around these guys. Like, I'm definitely choosing my word very carefully. I think you'd better leave is, is probably the correct thing here. I did do all the work, you just came up with the idea. In our society, that's valued. You did put me onto it. But we, I, we can maybe work better if I am the, the, mediat the mediator here. You may want to take this opportunity to go. But he has to sell. It's a product. People want it. There is no profit in empowering those not of the Kuhn. The means of creating the Gatlock is ours alone. It shall be dispensed only to our enemies, in the traditional manner. Hmm? You are a frustrating people. And you're fired, sodding bunch of oxmen and dog lords. A whole lot breathing smoke. Pah. You weren't paying me anyway. You will leave as well, human. Will I? There's no more coin for you here. I dislike this place, but that dwarf... Especially so. Hmm. Why do you bother me, human? I hire no blades and need no goods. Your kind think selfishness and want are normal. This city, all of it, leaves a bad taste. Huh. Well... <laughs> Why stay? I don't know, I'm pissed off because I was promised coin. Coin which I need. Suppose I was rewarded. You know, I did some good by uh by clearing the bandits out of the Talvashoth. It's a misunderstanding, yet another misunderstanding between the Canary, and it's that dwarf I should be mad at rather than anything, although you yeah, you didn't intentionally mislead him, I suppose. But I feel like you owe me something. You don't owe me anything because, as far as you were concerned, we did a disservice. So I guess I'm just frustrated and looking to understand. If you despise this place, why haven't you left? Since we arrived, I have seen nothing but greed and weakness. Dwarves, humans, elves, just... Festering, no order, no goal. You are one of the few I have met with any ability, and yet this too was random, a result of selfishness. I cannot fathom how a mire like this can be justified. You say we should leave, but how can you bear to stay in this chaos? Hmm. Slave, glorious, and wild. I hope to make it better. My welcome to the city was not so different from yours. And yet you suffer it. It's an opportunity to make a real difference. Karisten are soldiers. 
The Kune made it so. They can never vary from that assigned path, never be other than they are meant to be. But they are free to choose within that role, to accept and succeed, or deny and die. Glory is clear and defined. Mm -hmm. Could you, could not this entire city benefit from that certainty? How else will you know when you have made a real difference? You'll be able to see it. And there is so much worth in people being able to choose it for themselves. So is it certainty or is it slavery? I don't get the impression that you are going to attack me for voicing my opinions here. He's free to choose to obey. That isn't contradictory to you. He chooses to be, as do we all, long before any of your meaningless freedoms are presented. Mm -hmm. I am not the one to educate you. I did not intend to land here. But this city may demand certainty. I suspect we are done, human. Sure. Hmm. Let's see. I don't think we're done yet. I don't think Kirkwall would do well under military rule. The rule of the Kune is not military. It is discipline and order. How is that different? To your limited understanding, it is not. You fear soldiers that arrive to remove your pitiable vices. But they do not control Kunari. The Triumvirate divides and governs. One is nothing without the others. Yeah. All right, here's a question. Are any of you happy ever? Or do you just keep kind of being? What is that? Can you tell me about the other two parts? No. Now you're just being difficult. <laughs> I am no more equipped to explain than you are to understand. Ari Shock, Ari Gaina, Ari Kuhn. Pillars of the Kunari, of the nation that must be. There is but one way to know these things, human. And I have yet to decide if it must be done. I don't mean to imply uh, when I say that they are never happy. I imagine they are because people often are with their lot. Like, they establish their lot and they'll move within that. And then find happiness where they can. Um, it's only people who have known different who will be truly unhappy. To that extent, the Kuhn is, is valid in and of itself. Or, or this idea of militaristic order because it promotes not only stability, but the ability to thrive within certain roles. But the roles are outlined, designed for survivability, or this is what I understand of it so far, from the limited I've been experiencing. So it's like a balance between choice and what needs to be done in order to survive. But I think you are sacrificing some level of fulfillment of happiness. And the thing is that everybody dies. So I guess that's where I kind of disagree with it. So what was your mission? Why are you all here? You're a long way from home. Why did you come? To meet a demand of the Kuhn. Which was? It is a matter only the Kunari understand. Uh -huh. We remain until we fulfill the demand of the Kuhn. Or until the demand changes. Okay. So, do you just not sell because enemies? I'm gonna ask that last because I have a feeling you might kick me out if I pursue that any further. How many Kunari have you lost to the Talvashov? None. Optimistic, considering my death toll. <laughs> we lose nothing when weakness abandons the Kuhn. It is the Talvashov who have lost themselves. Okay. Yeah, one of them did. I met an honorable one. Doubtful. He said he was a mercenary, not a murderer. Then I know he made no claim to honor. Right. When they sell themselves, little remains. He is not even dead to the Kuhn. He is a living insult. Hmm. You guard your powder carefully. 
It is a tool that can only be allowed to exist under the ordered authority of the Kuhn. It could benefit many people. It does now. Just as swords benefit warriors, but are not given to children. Well, your children. Hmm. <laughs> okay. This has been interesting. I suppose this conversation alone and the fact that you were willing to carry it out, um, if reluctantly, was maybe even worth the mission itself. I won't thank you for it, but I guess I'm satisfied. Farewell, Panahedon human. Interesting. It was nice for maybe the first time to be able to say aloud as Ian, why suffer Kirkwall to make it better? What was that up there? Oh, Canary Compound. Oh, here we go. So, here we go. Uh, the people... I'm repeating myself. The people of the Kun are perhaps the least understood group in Thedas. They don't talk about it. The Kunari Wars were brutal, but so was the Chantry Schism. So was the fall of the Imperium. Some of this misunderstanding is an accident of nature. The race we call Kunari are formidable. Nature has given them fierce horns and strange eyes, and the ignorant look on them and see monsters. Some is an accident of language. Few among the Kuhn's people speak the common tongue, and fewer speak it well. In a culture that strives for mastery, to have only a passable degree of skill is humiliating indeed, and so they often keep quiet among the foreigners out of shame. Okay, but much of it is a result of the culture itself. The Canari view their whole society as a single creature, a living entity whose health and well-being is the responsibility of all. Oh. Each individual is only a tiny part of the whole, a drop of blood in the veins, important not for itself, but for what it is to the whole creature. Because of this, the Kunari, most outsiders meet, belong to the army, which the Kun regards as if it were the physical body, arms, legs, eyes and ears, the things a creature needs in order to interact with the world. One cannot get to know a person solely by studying his hand or his foot, and so one cannot truly meet the Kunari until one has visited their cities. That is where their mind and soul dwell. This is interesting. In Saharon and Parvolan, one can truly see the Kunari in their entirety. There, the unification of the Kunari into a single being is most evident. Workers, whom the Kunari calls the mind, produce everything the Kunari require. The soul, the priesthood, seeks a greater understanding of the self, the world, and extorts the body and mind to, continue, to continually strive per, for perfection. The body serves as the go-between for the mind, the soul, and the world. Everyone and everything has a place, decided by the Kun, in which they work for the good of the whole. It is a life of certainty, of equality, if not individuality. It's one thing that individuality breeds is adaptability. However, I'm not entirely sure this race wouldn't work. I feel like I can't look down on them and say they're not truly happy. Which is kind of what my instinct says. They sacrifice their individuality and therefore can never be truly fulfilled. I don't know. Maybe if I met the mind or the soul, see what they're like compared with these soldiers. then maybe I could get an idea but for now I suppose all I'm doing is accepting their individuality as a species what I'm not a fan of is the way they look down on us here the way that we are <sighs> survivability and, and perhaps sense and mind and brain aside individuality is largely the spice of life I look around the docks and I look around Low Town. <laughs> hear the hear the jangling music of the hind man and the arguing people on the docks, and I think this is just vibrant and beautiful. Step it up, shit for shanks. I've got elves working harder than you. Just keep the ships coming and we'll get them through. Even if it is a shorter existence, I'm not sure I trade it for the longevity that is implied by Kunari life. He finds a Ferelden on board. Over they go, no questions. They can live however they want to. 
but if they try to force us to live their way, I suspect I would fight them. Kurt Wall ain't what it used to be. That's good for some, I guess. Watch out by the Canary Cop. 